Hi, my name is Ben Derman from the University of Chicago, and I'm pleased to be presenting our data from the ASH 2022 conference. Our abstract uh, was entitled Perspective Trial Using Multimodal Measurable Residual Disease Negativity to Guide Discontinuation of Maintenance Therapy in Myeloma, which we affectionately call MRD to stop. Um, just to give some brief background, we know that minimal or measurable residual disease, which I'll refer to as MRD, negativity is strongly associated with a better prognosis in myeloma. And in particular, the deeper the level of MRD negativity, the better the prognosticative abilities of that test are. So as you can see on the curve on the bottom right, patients who are MRD negative at a level of 10 to the minus six, in other words, detecting one clonal cell per million, uh, have better prognosis in terms of progression-free survival than those with uh, MRD negativity just at 10 to the minus fifth, uh, which you could see in blue. Now, maintenance therapy in myeloma can actually convert patients who are MRD positive after initial induction or consolidation therapy to MRD negativity, and then ideally sustain it. But there are a few issues with maintenance therapy. Typically, we use lenalidomide. We have no established end date. Many patients are on therapy indefinitely. It certainly has side effects, which can impact the quality of life, including uh, second cancers, especially second blood cancers that may arise uh, later down the line. And there's a significant financial toxicity for many patients. So the question that we asked with this trial is, can multimodal sustained MRD negativity help to guide discontinuation of maintenance therapy in myeloma and in the process, potentially serve as a marker for cure in this disease. Here is our uh, schema for the study. Essentially what we did is we took patients who are in a prolonged deep response, either with a prior MRD negative test, uh, at least a year from uh, screening, or were in a sustained complete response for at least two years. They had to have had uh, no positive disease by PET scan leading up to the study, and a one year at least of maintenance or consolidation after transplant or induction therapy. All patients went a multimodal MRD assessment, which you can see um, in the text on the bottom here, included a PET scan, flow cytometry at a depth of 10 to the minus fifth, clonoseq with 10 to the minus sixth uh, sensitivity, uh, which is an NGS test. And then we used a CD138 selected NGS, which we'll call a 10 to the minus seventh. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a minute. If patients were negative at the 10 to the minus sixth level and had no evidence disease on a PET scan, they could undergo discontinuation of maintenance therapy. And then they are surveilled for um, three years, once a year with a bone marrow biopsy and a PET scan, and every three months using blood tests. Now we uh, include an exploratory evaluation of this 10 to the minus seventh assay, which I'll explain a little bit more in just a second. Now, why are we doing this assay, or what is the, the reason for this? Well, clonoseq is validated for MRD testing at the 10 to the minus 6 threshold. So we may be able to take as much DNA uh, as we want to from an aspirate. Um, we can achieve the cellular requirements that are required to get a 10 to the minus 7th depth, but we can't really analyze that many cells. Right now, we're restricted to looking at only 2, 3, 4 million cells uh, from the bone marrow. So that's our current standard. But what we did in this evaluation is we took a much larger aspirate sample from the bone marrow and we applied a CD138 immunomagnetic separation to pull out just the CD138 positive cells, which are really the, the cells of interest because those are predominantly the plasma cells um, in that sample. Now, of course, we have to account for sorting efficiency, pipetting efficiency, DNA extraction, all of which lead to a correction factor of about we get about 22% of that initial cell input. And then we take the CD138 enriched fraction and run our NGS test on that using clonacy. And um, what we show here is uh, so far 70 patients have been screened, 38 patients met the eligibility to discontinue therapy. You can see the reasons why so many people actually did not proceed. Most of it was due to older samples. We couldn't find a trackable clone for the next generation sequencing MRD test. But the median age is 66. Um, you can see that we have good minority representation, 18% black, 11% Hispanic, 40%, nearly 40% of patients had high risk disease at diagnosis by some manner. Uh, in most patients, 95% were still in their first line of therapy while on maintenance. 68%, about two thirds, had um, a prior transplant. 
and the great majority, 79%, receive some form of multi-drug consolidation, more than one drug, following transplant or initial induction therapy before proceeding to maintenance. The maintenance therapy most commonly used was lenalidomide, as you can see, in 95%. And the amount of time that patients were on a combination of either or uh, consolidation and maintenance therapy was 42 months with a range of 12 to 90 months. So far, we have a median follow-up of 15 months. And of the 38 patients who I mentioned were enrolled in discontinuation, you can see that two or 5% withdrew before one year. And the reason for that was one, due to insurance uh, change, and two, uh, a patient elected to resume lenalidomide despite having no evidence of disease, simply had a, a change of heart. Um, two patients did have disease progression. One occurred at 12 months and one occurred at 18 months. Both were biochemical progressions. They were not clinical progressions. And we've had fortunately zero deaths on the study so far. So this is a way to look at all 38 patients so far uh, that were enrolled as of the data cutoff. You can see that five out of the 38 had some form of MRD resurgence at the 10 to the minus sixth level. And of those five patients, two have had disease progression. Now the red dots that you see here are the 10 to the minus seventh or the CD138 enriched NGS samples that were positive for detectable disease at baseline. So you can see that there are four red dots here, two patients um, uh, in the disease progression group and two in the no disease progression group. So another way to think about it is looking at the MRD kinetics here. At baseline, what you can see is that of course, 100% of patients were MRD negative by NGS at 10 to the minus sixth, but 89% were MRD negative using our 10 to the minus seventh assay, leaving four out of 38 or 11% who were still positive at the 10 to the minus seventh level. Now, all of these patients, all four of these patients converted to at least MRD positivity or progression at 12 months. Um, and so you can see that denoted by the arrow here. So what we look at as a, a result at 12 months is that um, essentially we have only one out of 25 patients who converted to 10 to the minus seventh um, positivity at 12 months. And you can see that we have 80% of patients who are negative still by both assays at 12 months with four patients out of the 25 who have now either converted uh, to MRD positivity or have had disease progression. So even this one patient who converted to 10 to the minus seventh positivity at 12 months later converted to uh, 10 to the minus sixth positivity at a later point. Um, a third way to look at this is thinking about sustained MRD negativity at 12 months. So using our 10 to the minus sixth assay for patients that have already reached the 12 month mark, 21 out of 25 had no detectable disease or 84%. Looking at it uh, at the 10 to the minus seventh level, you can see that 20 out of 21 or 95% still had no evidence of disease at 12 months if they were negative at 10 to the minus seventh at baseline. So what we're seeing here as a result of these um, three ways of looking at it is that patients who were positive for disease using the 10 to the minus seventh uh, assay at baseline were really, it accurately predicted who was going to develop disease progression or MRD resurgence at a later time point between 12 and 24 months. Um, the other key findings that we've showed here is that we actually, this CD138 selected assay works, right? We can achieve this 10 to the minus seventh sensitivity. 60 out of 62 bone marrow samples um, pass quality control. You can see that um, the unselected um, without the correction factor uh, total nucleated cell count was 59 million on average or as the median. And after the correction factor was 13 million. And uh, you can see the median 130, CD138 positive cell count was 153,000. Another thing that we often see when we run MRD by NGS at 10 to the minus six is a finding of detected sequences below the limit of detection. In other words, less than one per million. Now, six patients on this study had this finding of detectable sequences below the limit of detection using the standard 10 to the minus six assay. And at a median follow-up of 12 months for these patients, only one actually converted to MRD positive at 10 to the minus sixth. And that patient was also known to be MRD positive at 10 to the minus seventh at baseline. 
So this finding of detectable sequences below the limit of detection, it doesn't necessarily mean that there really truly is going to be disease resurgence. And I want to throw this number up here, 9,126,000. This is actually US dollars that we think is the total savings from stopping lenalidomide alone with just 15 months of median follow-up. This assumes an $18,000 monthly cost for lenalidomide multiplied by 507 months of total observation. Now, even when we factor in the cost of testing and reinitiating treatment among relapsed patients, the cost savings is still likely well above $6 million. Now, we still need to do a formal cost savings analysis as we get a longer follow-up, but I think this is a, a very impressive number when you think about the potential cost savings for our patients. Of course, our limitations include the fact that we only had 15 months of follow-up, and the high number of screen failures, which I mentioned, is due to the age of or the unavailability of archived samples. And we hope to be able to share with you in the future quality of life surveys that we're collecting pre and post discontinuation of therapy, as I mentioned, a formal cost savings analysis, and of course, serial mass spectrometry from the peripheral blood that we hope to be able to share with you soon. So in conclusion, MRD negativity at 10 to the minus 6 and 10 to the minus 7 are sustained at a high rate even after discontinuation of maintenance therapy in patients with multimodal MRD negativity. And using the CD138 selected assay is not only feasible, but actually may help to identify patients who are at a high risk for disease progression or MRD resurgence if they were to stop their treatment. In other words, telling us who we really shouldn't be stopping treatment on. The, the finding of clonal sequences below the limit of detection is still of uncertain prognosis significance, and we hope to elucidate that as time goes on. And lastly, there's a lot of potential cost savings here uh, using an MRD-guided discontinuation strategy. So thanks so much.